Yeah. You also are, uh, you're a mentor at the Composer Labs, or you have oh, been, yeah. rather. Um, what, is, what is the Composer Labs exactly, and, and what is the process of mentoring young composers like that? Well, it's, it's not necessarily young composers, but uh, I started doing it in, I think it was 2003, was the first year that they decided to include documentaries as a separate category in the Composer's Lab. So I did it, and so I've been with it from the very beginning, when it, at first we were separate from fiction, then we then they started combining them, then they separated them again. And in the old days, we used to do it on the mountain, which was at the um, resort, Sundance Resort. And it was much more focused on the filmmakers and then giving them a chance to interact and collaborate with composers. And then um, a few years ago, they moved it to Skywalker and they really started focusing on sound design and music. And it became much more, in some ways, you know, it changed from what it had been, which was kind of a really focusing on storytelling and not expecting to have a final product at the end of it. But when we moved to Skywalker, it changed and it became something to really sh um, illustrate to documentary filmmakers who hadn't necessarily been as focused on the craft part of sound and music as non as fiction were. And I think it started blowing their minds. You know, if you take a documentary composer who hasn't really thought much about music and you put them in the room with the string section while they're recording. And I think they start to understand the power of music in a whole new way. So that was really fun for me to, you know, it, it was even, even when we did it on the, at the resort on the hill, on the mountain, um, the filmmakers would kind of be amazed at how much, um, how much nuance there was in music how much they were able to communicate, if they could communicate, they could basically tweak and turn a knob with the composers to get what they really wanted from the score instead of just settling. Oh, okay, that'll do. And I think, it, you know, so the whole program has worked in two really important ways. One was, one was to really help filmmakers understand how to collaborate with a composer so they could really push the limits of the craft, you know. And then the other was to understand production of music and how and sound and how much that can contribute to production value of your film and storytelling in every possible way like it's so much fun to sit there in the room when they're hearing it and they're just like you know exploding <laughs> their brains are exploding little light bulbs are going off and i think every every filmmaker that's had the opportunity to be part of it has really been able to expand their um view of how to use music and the composers have also expanded their view of the filmmakers because now they're hanging out together, you know, everybody's screening each other's work and interacting. It's just a fantastic uh, environment where everyone is treated as if they're a very important artist. That's the beauty of Sundance. And, and so everyone really gets to focus on being their best and, and also trying, trying new things and pushing their own comfort zones. So like they always say, uh, Tabitha always says, you know, don't be afraid to fail. That's really why you're here is to fail because you're trying new things. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, for those watching that might not know, do you know how to apply for this, the, the Composer or Director's Lab or any of those? Oh, yeah. Labs? Well, you have to go to the Sundance Institute website. And um, definitely, if you're in the Society of Composers and Lyricists, they usually have a call to action. I'm sure if you follow the Facebook page of Sundance Institute, they'll probably put out a call. But you can always go on their website and look for when, you know, I think you know, I can't remember when the dates are, but they usually have the workshops uh, in July or August. And uh, it's it's kind of timed in a way where the films are kind of almost ready for the festival or the mm -hmm. festivals. Do any of them do go to, to the festival. Some of them, I mean, it doesn't, it's not a no, it's not a for sure just because you're in there, but, but it, you know, a lot of the film, well, the films that are in there are already having support from Sundance. So, but they don't necessarily get into the festival, but they have support from the Institute. And, um, and that's an incredibly, any time you can be involved with a Sundance program of any kind, I would say you owe it to yourself to apply and keep applying because, you know, I've known people that have applied nine times and they got in on the ninth time. So never mm -hmm. just, it's nothing personal as the same with the, with the festival. There's so many submissions that it's just really sometimes hard, you know, but if you just keep trying, you'll get there eventually. Right. And then, and then the part of your question about being an advisor um, so the, so Sundance is very artistically, the Institute is very artistically oriented and they're looking for, with the composers, they're not looking for somebody who can be the next John Williams. They're looking for someone who has some kind of voice, 
some kind of new, somebody as an artist that would, it's important to support and develop because they'll really bring something new or something unique to our profession or to the industry. And so being an advisor, my role mostly I find is to share certain things that I know can be helpful. I've learned, I've been doing this for like almost 30 years. I've done a lot of mistakes and I've learned a lot of stuff along the way. And so I love to share that, you know, some of the things I've learned. And I also like to really focus on how do they op open up to their own process? You know, I would never judge someone's music or tell them how to do it, but it's really, really exciting to help them understand and have confidence in their own ability to, um, to try something, you know, to really go for it and to keep at it and not be so concerned about, oh, what if the director doesn't like it? Well, you know, that's okay. They might not like anything, you know, but the point is for you to just really develop your ability to try things, to, to, to imagine something, be able to execute it, and then be able to discuss it in a meaningful way and take from that discussion the direction that you need to build on the ideas that work. And if none of them work, start over. <laughs> but, but you know, it's all, um, I learned a long time ago, this is about process. It's not about a goal. So if you wanna, uh, you know, if your goal is to get through it and everybody love you and think you're great, make a record, <laughs> you know. But if you wanna really go through a very deep collaborative creative process, then you have to be able to flow with that, you know, and it's, it's a really, it's very, very hard. It's complicated. There's personalities involved. Um, but, you know, if your heart's in the right place and you've got your chops, you know, then you can really work your way through it and, and, and have an amazing experience with other really creative people.